Heavenly Father, I pray this morning that the people in this place and the people watching at home get this head thing to their heart and they begin to live an abundant life. One that people will say, man, how on earth did you get to where you got to? Heavenly Father, I pray that this message will not just be information, but it'll be information that will bring forth transformation. That we will not just see it as something difficult to live, but that we will understand that when we die, He lives. And that this year, aha, I'm going to still claim it, Lord. 2020, the year where, where things are revealed and we're able to see. Come on, that God will use these dark times to bring about some believers that can see, that can see your truth. Come on, Shanda. I better pull myself back. I might go into that. Father, I just thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Y'all could have your seats. Hello, everyone watching from home. We love you. We are here welcome back whether you're sitting here at home man we love you you know we love you and i'm excited about this message somebody told me the other day man you're excited about every message i said well yeah i I think it should be like that but that's really what comes to my mind when i think about these messages you know what i'm saying and so you know i woke up this morning and the fruit was visible amen get it (laughs) come on y'all you know i'm like look And so um, today's message, you know, we've been in the book of James, you know, amazing book, uh, the book of James. We've been talking about it from a place where it says Hevekins, Hevekins, and, you know, say, what is a Hevekin? And we say a Hevekin is a citizen of heaven, kind of like if you're from America, you're an American. If you're from Puerto Rico, you're a a, a Puerto Rican. I almost said Mexican. I've been with my wife for so long, I've kind of transformed you know if you're from mexico you're a mexican right and so the place you're from dictates who you are and what how you operate right we have constitutional rights the heaven has certain rights certain principles that when you apply them you uh we talked last week we said man when you start walking in the promises of god or you step into god's word is really when you're in his presence and walking by way of the spirit So this isn't something that we just hear, but we also do. And it's the difference between having it in your head and getting it in your heart. Right? There's a difference. There's a major difference. Right? Because the guy who has it in his heart, he understands the process. He is now not trying to be a Christian. He just is. Because his mind has changed. He's transformed. He's renewed his mind. It's kind of like brushing your teeth. At one time, somebody had to beg you to brush your teeth. I know you don't want to talk about it, but it's the truth. Your mama told you to go in the shower and get the soap out behind your ears 55 million times. Can I get an amen, mamas? Look at all the mamas are like, amen. Some of you got kids a little older and you're still telling them. The goal is for them to be able to wash their ears on their own. Just automatic, right? Just automatic. You don't want them to be in the shower going, man, I have to try today really hard to wash my ear. Like, nah, you just want it to just come natural. Like, <laughs> if you've been in prison, you got your little towel. <laughs> Y'all with me? Just from a natural place, not from a place of, oh, this is so difficult. The more you begin to apply certain things, the more you begin to live from that place. So you live from a holy place because Jesus is holy. And when you begin to not just believe in who Jesus is, but believe enough to follow, you begin to see a completely different life. You see the abundant life, not the life that you live, but the life that he lives through you. Amen? So today we're in James chapter 4. Man, I, I, I'm going to say I love it, right? I, I just... I love this dude, right? He's, I mean, he is the in-your-face apostle. He ain't cutting. He's straight up. He's just what we would call in the streets real, right? He's like, this is what it is. And the cool part is that when you look at it and you see who he's talking to, he's talking to believers. He's talking to the church in Jerusalem. So uh, the reality is that he's talking to the church. He ain't talking to like the, the, you know, even though it's all one church, he's talking to the mother church. 
He's talking to the first birth like of churches out there, James. He is talking to the church. Like, you know what I'm saying? This one, and then we have all the other ones. So he's talking to them, and he's, and he's straight up in your face. In every chapter, he's talking about some. He's like, y'all just listening, but y'all ain't doing it because I don't see your fruit. I see what kind of wisdom you have by the way that you walk this out. I mean, you could talk about it all day, but I could see it in your life is what we were talking about. I think when we're talking about the difference between heavenly wisdom and earthly wisdom, right? Like the reality is that you could talk whatever you want to say, but by the way that you're living your life, right? If a dude's broke, would you say, man, that dude really knows about finances? You probably wouldn't, right? Like, like that's, the, that's the truth. If a dude's like, yo, man, I love my wife, but he's cheating, would you say, you get what I'm saying? The, the reality is at that moment, something's happening that there's a disconnect somewhere, y'all. Like, I mean, I know we don't like to talk about this stuff, but I got to give it to you. You with me? So, so here now, we're in chapter four. And, and, and I want to make this clear because, you know, I'm going to read it. And I'm going to read it in the Passion, but I might go back to CSB. Again, I always mention this. I study out of the New American Standard because I believe that's where you get the, the, the you know, the word for word. But then I, I like to read it in all different translations because I'm thinking, I don't know who's in the church. And I'm not only speaking to theologians. I'm speaking to the guy who's never, ever known Jesus before. So I'm trying to do a good introduction. If I introduce you to somebody and you, you're like, man, I don't know nothing about him. Realistically, you might not go dating. You might not even get married. But if I do a real good introduction, ooh, then I represent them well. I mean, that's it. The rest, the rest is easy. Are you with me? Amen. And so we're going to talk about today. Uh, today's title is, Are You Sleeping with the Enemy? I was going to name it, You Adulterers. <laughs> but they were like, man, that's the one. That's like, that's like straight. <laughs> I'm like, but it's what it says. So I, I lightened it up a little bit and called it, Are You Sleeping? Right? Because I didn't want somebody going, it's me. And then I'm like a whole different type of service. <laughs> are you with me? So I, I'm like, are you sleeping with the enemy? <clears throat> so I wanted to talk to you before we jump in about what a world, what it means to be like with the world. Because I know there's all different types of denominational religions, and they say, hey, if you're doing that over there, you are the world. But you got to know in context. You got to know what they were talking about. You got to know who they were talking to. So the world is a system headed by Satan that leaves God out of it. It's anything that God is not in the picture, anything that God is not included in it. Are you with me? That's how we know it, uh, what it is, because we know if it lines up with the word, then it got to be God. But sometimes we read that and we get people to read, oh, you know, friends with the world. And you're like, you can't go to the movies. You can't wear makeup. You know, some guy told a good friend of mine, like, hey, I, I saw that. It tripped me out. It just tripped me out. They're like, hey, do you think that God uh, wants you, you know, with, uh, with uh, colored hair? And I'm thinking to myself. <laughs> I'm thinking God don't care if I got no hair. God's after my heart. He ain't after, yo, I might think I look fly. And I'm like, yo, I look fly. And God's like, let me look at that heart. <laughs> like the clothes are cool. That's just my personality coming out. It, it is what it is. You can tell by the, what you drive and what you wear. Right? It's not a bad thing. It just is what it is. Right? I'm artistic. I told my wife, you think I dress crazy now, wait till I'm about 65. <laughs> and I really don't care. Then I'm like, <laughs> pray for her. <laughs> and so I wanted to talk to you about a, a system, a system of thinking and values, right, that takes God's perspective out of the matter he doesn't want your values controlled by the world he calls it spiritual adultery your values what what you value come on man what you value what's important to you i know that you've been brainwashed by a lot of things and you've accepted a a, a whatever truth uh, you embrace is the reality that you live so i know that you've embraced some truths that are false 
because they were part of a worldly system or a thought pattern we told you that the world comes from the word cosmos, like cosmopolitan, the, the magazine, all the chicks love and all that. I'm not saying like throw out, oh my God, I can't read cosmos. You're good. It's just saying like their thought patterns and how they think and the, what, what they feel trends is important should not matter to you because you're from a different system. You're from a kingdom system. Come on, you're a heaven. You're a citizen of heaven. If we, as brothers and sisters, all put ourselves under the umbrella of heaven, it wouldn't matter if you're Puerto Rican, Mexican, Honduran, Jamaican. It would not matter because we would all be brothers under the same umbrella, waving the flag of heaven, honoring earthly things according to the kingdom. So I'm going to read it to you. Everybody on the same page right now. Okay, buckle up. What is the cause of your conflicts and quarrels with each other? So obviously there's beef. For those that don't understand beef, it's two people who are arguing with each other or having a disagreement of some form of fashion. Doesn't the battle begin in... Now this is cool because they fighting. Some say, brother, don't call it that. They're in a disagreement. Fine. They fighting. It conflicts, quarrels. Doesn't the battle begin inside of you? Ooh, now this thing is changing. Because I know when we fight, we blame it. Anyway, let me come back. Inside of you as a fight to have your own way and fulfill your own desires. Wow, so this fight is not really about what you're fighting for. This is really your own flesh. Your own desires on the inside of you. You jealously want what others have, so you begin to see yourself as better than others. You scheme and envy and harm others to selfishly obtain and in some translations it says you murder obviously everybody ain't showing up with a 45 to church so we're gonna we're gonna explain that here in a minute but i need you to understand this it says you scheme with envy and harm others to selfishly obtain what you crave that's why you quarrel and fight and all the time you don't obtain what you want because you won't ask god for it right heavenly wisdom right because you got to look at this thing as a whole theme What's the whole theme in James? Be, be quick to listen, so to speak, and so to get angry. Be quick to listen to what God has to say. Heavenly wisdom matters. Stop thinking the way you used to think because the way you used to think is jacked up. Let's get you to thinking this way, and then all these things get fulfilled. But right here, he's talking about why are we fighting all the time? Because he's talking to believers. Remember, you're like, those lost people. No, no. Look at your neighbor and say he's talking to you. Yeah, I know. Like right now, you're like, I don't want to look. No, no, no. He's talking to each and every one of us. I didn't read this and go, how dare they? I'm like, oh, man, yep, this is me sometimes. I'm glad this is here. <laughs> it keeps me in wheel alignment. And all the time you don't obtain what you want because you don't ask God for it. And if you ask, you don't receive it for you're asking with corrupt motives or you're asking amiss. Seeking only to fulfill your own selfish desires, you have become spiritual adulterers. Man. Meaning that you're sleeping with somebody. Who are having an affair. An unholy relationship with the world. I like it when it gets quiet. Don't you know that flirting with the world's values places you at odds with God? Whoever chooses to be the world's friend makes himself God's enemy. That's a powerful word right there. Does the scripture mean to you that, does the scripture mean nothing to you? That says the spirit that God breathed into your hearts is a jealous lover. Now remember that we talked about bitter jealousness, jealousy, and I said that he had to add bitter, bitter because that word jealous is like bubbling over. Kind of like the fervent prayer. Someone who is bubbling over, so <laughs> that's how he loves you. He's a jealous lover. He's bubbling over with love for you. He's like madly in love. He, that, think about it, man. Talk about fatal attraction. God is like attracted to you fatally that he died. He's like, yo, I'll die for you. That's how much he loves you. Like, forget about this. Oh, we went to the movies. No, he's like, I'm going to die for you. <laughs> no matter where you go, there he is. No matter where you go, think about it, right? We saw the movie and we thought, oh, this is crazy. But nah, God really loves you that way. 
Nothing on the planet will love you like that. And the one that you see, oh, Pastor Juan, you love someone. No, it's him in me that loves that way. Me, I'm jacked up. I just learned to lean on the one who is. Amen? And look at it, it says, but he continues to pour out more and more grace upon us. For it says, God resists you when you are proud, but constantly pours out grace when you are humble. So, the, so, so then surrender to God, stand up to the devil and resist him, and he will turn away from you. Move your heart closer to God. Uh, and closer to God and he will come even closer to you okay God's will is that you acknowledge the fact that you need some help so here the first thing we see is we see them fighting these people are quarreling right he's dealt with this all throughout the Bible there's always people arguing or fighting right and so here we see that most of the time in the Bible and even in the book of James uh, the rich discriminated against the poor there was always discrimination against people right there was always discrimination about social status there was always right because it was selfish everything about all that system everybody say system was selfish come on these cats were like living from a place where they were like it was all about how large we could get and if we could keep these guys oppressed the system has not changed it's it's a worldly system y'all so I know that we're fighting for things, and I, I, I believe in all of that. I believe in fighting for things. I believe in all of that. Because obviously, we're to do that from every part of the Bible. When you're talking about abortion, when you're talking about uh, heels to halos, and getting women from sex trafficking, all of these things, drugs. Like, this is a, this is a forever fight. We just don't. We should be always fighting, and we should always be doing outreaches, and we should always be outside. Uh, big kudos to Sabrina and Francisco and the team. They went out there on um, Friday, did night out with Jesus. They gave pizzas. They did all kinds of stuff. It's consistent. We're thinking, oh, you know, doing an outreach uh, over in uh, Southeast, an outreach in Northeast. Like, it's growing. Are you with me? Constantly thinking, kingdom, 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 kingdom. How do we keep building the kingdom? And you see these two people fighting each other, and they're fighting each other, and they were jealous, and they were selfish. And if you look at Galatians 5.15, if you look at Galatians, it talks about watching out and not devouring one another. It talks about being brothers and sisters in Christ, not to eat each other up. So obviously, you're not going to come to church and murder, but the way you're murdering is the way you are devouring each other by the way you guys talk to one another. And James' principle was like, hey, make sure, don't, because if he's talking to a Christian, he's like, you should be talking from a heavenly place because you're connected to that source. So James is always reminding us that, hey, shouldn't we be talking from the thing we're connected to? Yo, man, like, watch yourself. You're talking a little bit off. And listen, we're all guilty. We're all guilty of sometimes saying things we should not say. Sometimes it's because of our anger. Some, a lot of times it's our selfish desires. Pastor Juan, go in a little further into the selfish desire. Well, most of the time it's a deeply rooted issue. So let me give you an example. Let's say that this fight that you're having with somebody else, if you're really honest and you think true, honest, remember, inspiring, necessary, right? If you really think and kind, if you think that, that acronym that we did and you start to think about it, sometimes when you are fighting with somebody, let's say you, you were still bleeding all over the place because you've been rejected most of your life. Your father left you. Every relationship you've been in, they left you. Um, I don't know. You just let, we're just talking about rejection, right? Somebody left you. you. You have the problem with thinking, man, I might be alone. So you're living through life. You went to church. You had a great week. Everything's cool. But you haven't really dealt with it because every time somebody talks to you about it, guess what? You're like, I don't have that problem. I don't. And there you're in a quarrel because you don't want to be honest enough to say, hey, my left, uh, my left tire has a flat. So you never change it, and now you're busting the rim, axles jacked up. You're in a relationship now. With the boof, the boof, the boof. <laughs> now you're in a relationship. You're like, hey, my name is, and you're like, hi, how you doing? And you didn't bother to really sit down and get to know the person. You just thought they were fine. <laughs> oh, he fine. And he got a job and go to church. And he like, yo, I'm telling you, she all that. He ain't asked the credit score. He ain't asked nothing. I'm just saying, you could tell a lot. You know, we could talk about your critics going to say, hey, how jacked up you've been the last five years? Are you going to change? Or are we going to bring this into this? Because, ooh, please. I mean, I can help you. I can walk you through this. But if not, we in trouble. 
So all of a sudden, that rejection, what happens is you get into a fight because you know what? You, that day, that other person tells you no or says, nah, I don't want to. And you all of a sudden start fighting because really you're fighting with the fact that, oh, you don't want to be with me? The other dude's clueless. He's just like, nah, I just, I just want to go to Best Buy. I, I just want to go with my friend. Oh, you'd rather be with him than with me. No, we were just going to go look at some jerseys. So is the fight really about that or is the fight really about your insecurities and you being rejected so much and being left time after time after time that now the person in front of you is amazing, but you're going to mess that up because there's your conflict. When's the last time you looked within yourself to really see what the problem was? Huh? Oh, you want me to be, Pastor, be transparent. Let's just stay here for a little bit and forget about the rest of the sermon. So all of a sudden, you know, man, I don't have a dad. My, I mean, love you, dad, but here it is. He's not there. He wasn't ever there. Right? So I come to Christ. I'm trying my hardest to be a dad. When my children don't respond the way I think they should respond, Ooh, I get upset. Can I get an amen, dads? Yeah. Come on, now I'm like, look, I'm here, man. I'm trying to pick you up. I'm trying to, I, what else you want me to do? Like, dang, here, take my shoes. Like, yeah, I'm trying to be a dad. Now, it's not cool that I'm not, uh, they have nothing to do with that. <laughs> they don't know what I'm, I'm fighting. I'm fighting, but really what I'm saying, if we go between the lines is, yo, I don't have a dad, and he doesn't do this with me, and all this stuff, and I'm doing it with you, and you don't want to respond the way I think you should respond, because if I would have had a dad, I would have responded way better. Y'all with me? Yeah. Now, what does that have to do with, they're like, uh, we, I mean, we hung, we hung out with you last week, like... <laughs> Y'all following my drift, though? I mean, it's a very true scenario. I'm being real. I was super transparent right there. I get heated. I'm like, you ain't calling me in two weeks. I'm busy. You with me? No, that has nothing to do with them. They're like, Dad, I was just kind of like, I was like on vacation. <laughs> so I've had to literally go into, into looking at what that was and start assessing what's in front of me according to what the word says and dealing with them as individuals according to who they are in front of me. Now, all of us are dealing with certain things that some are, in, some are healing, some are healing. Some have healed and maybe every now and then you, you peel the scab and you're like, ah! Y'all following me? And so you start devouring one another because of your selfish ambition and your disorderly conduct because nothing's in order inside because you're still battling some of those hurts and pains. Now look at Matthew 7, 1 through 5. Let me just give it to you real quick. Ooh, geez, let me just read it. Do not judge so that you won't be judged for you will be judged by the same standard which you judge others. Now, look at this. And you will be measured by the same measure you use. That's why I try to, like, come at people from the word, not from my own personal thing. Now watch. Look, 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 look. Why do you look at the splinter in your brother's eye? You know it, but have a plank in your own. Right? Uh, let me take that splinter out of your eye. And look, there's a beam of wood in your own eye. So you have this big old thing in your eye, and you're like, yo, let me get that out. And then he says, hypocrite. First, take the beam out of your eye, and then you will see clearly to take the splinter out of your brother's eye. Check it out. Listen to what he's saying. Listen, this is the best way I could give it. This is the best way I could give it. I like using dieting because I don't know. I feel like dieting and the cross are like dieting, budgeting. Everything's kind of like a form of I got to give this up to grab this and get it better. Everything's created by the Lord. So you see the cross and everything. So it would be like you being extremely overweight, never dieting, never going to the gym, and you walk up to your brother who's a little chunky. And you're like, brother. <laughs> hey, your money is jacked up. You don't budget. You don't nothing. Then a, a brother goes and he misspends one time. He just finally got a job. He ain't worked in a while. And he splurges. And he's like, man, I'm broken. You're like, brother, you know what you need to do. 
And if he asked you how much was in your account, you have 50 bucks. Y'all getting the concept? Like, he's like, in order to properly see how to help your brother, why don't you walk that out yourself first? Get to a place where you are learning some things, not just because you heard it and you know it in your head, but you are literally living out the wisdom and then speak to somebody else about what they should do. If not, you're a hypocrite. That ain't that, that, ain't that difficult. And it's okay to take your time. It's okay. A lot of the things, you know, you do today is kind of like a garden. What you do today is what you're going to have next year, tomorrow. You might not see it right away, but all of those things that you do according to the word will definitely grow and manifest. All right? We blame stuff on everything and everyone else. Well, the reason I got this in my eyes is because if my wife would... <laughs> right? I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to go to that church anymore because you know what? They ain't the way I think they should be. And really, you're just dealing with you. Somebody didn't say hi to you and you get all bent out. Of, maybe, they, maybe they had a, could they have a bad day? What are they fighting with their wife? What if you found out a month later and they get divorced and then you're like, oh man, you were going through all that. And yet you were like, I can't believe. <laughs> Why don't you sit down and talk to somebody for a little bit? If, you, if it really bothers you like that, reach out to them and say, can I talk to you? I just really want to know where you're at because I, I feel this way and you make me feel this way and I don't want to feel a certain way if it's not right. So I'd rather just come to you, not to 15 other people. But we're good at that, huh? Can you believe it, girl? She was at church and, you know, I asked her to come with me and she wasn't there and I saw her on Facebook and I was like, I cannot believe she did not hang out with me. She is not my friend. We're going to talk about that at the end here. We're getting there. Second Timothy 3, but you need to be aware that in the final days, the culture of society will become extremely fierce and difficult for the people of God. People will be self-centered, lovers of themselves, obsessed with money. They will boast of great things as they strut around, being arrogant and prideful and mock what is right. Because there's a lot of people mocking what is right in, in the name of they think that's right, but yet they don't really read and they don't know, con they don't, they, they, they didn't, they didn't. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't, they just, you know, Facebook believers. Not knocking if you're a true follower and you're on Facebook, you know, just make, let me make that clear. They're like, could you believe the pastor said, let me think. It says, it says they will be ungrateful and ungodly. They will become addicted to hateful and malicious slander, slaves to their desires. They will be ferocious, belligerent haters, hate, belligerent haters. We're going to grow from haters to belligerent haters of what is good and right when brutal treachery they will act out rest, uh, without restraint come on they would look like people who have no self-control come on slaves to their desires oh yeah i read that with brutal treachery they will act without restraint bigoted and wrapped in clouds of their conceit they will find their delight in the pleasures they will find their delight in the pleasures of the world in the pleasures of the way the world thinks and in their thought patterns You follow me? Don't get all of a sudden like, oh no, no makeup. I will just cry every day and more. Like, do not do that. Please do not think that my friend Lucky here with, with his blonde hair is going to hell. Because then I'm in trouble. We need to shave today. He is after his heart. He is after his heart. He is looking at his heart like this. He can come next week with 15 colors. Does not matter. It's not making, if it's making somebody else stumble, if you're like, his hair color made me sin, <laughs> then hey, man, please let me know. I'll do what I need to do to help you. <laughs> it says they would find pleasures of this world, pleasures in their thought patterns more than the pleasures of the loving God. So obviously there's pleasures in God. You just have to rightly prioritize. And when you put purpose, purpose Come on, intimacy in the garden. Come on, intimacy. Turn off the light. Intimacy. See, we, we do it backwards. If we put the purpose of intimacy, if we put purpose, pleasure always comes from that. Amen, married folks? 
That's it. I'm like, y'all ain't excited, Mary Bog, about intimacy. I mean, y'all like, y'all nervous because we're in church. You can talk about that. You good? We kept it PG 16. <laughs> Woo, man. It's crazy. You're like, pleasure. All the men are like, I don't know if I should answer that right now. The women are like, I'm not going to say that. They may pretend to have respect for God, so they're going to pretend to have a reverence for God, but in reality, they want nothing to do with his power, nothing to do with God's power, so stay away from people like this, and it's basically, they're going to deny, they're going to have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof, and you know where the power comes from? It's from the death at the cross. It's when you deny yourself and you die daily and you go, man, no. It's because every, ah, every single time you say yes to a promise is a no to the flesh. So every yes to the promise is going to hurt the flesh. Yes to the promise, hurt the flesh. Yes to the promise, hurt the flesh. Eventually, you will become the new thought pattern, the new thought process, which is a godly thinking pattern. And now all of a sudden, it just comes natural. You ain't trying to figure that out anymore. You already went through the soreness of the legs, and now you got some big legs. Amen? Glory. But how do you ask? Is it about you? Because he says you ask with wrong motives. And that word, or in some translations it says amiss. Well, the Greek word and the original word means sick or diseased. You're asking from a sick place. You know that James talk, talks about, I think seven times he mentions being complete. Or being perfect. Because you know how we use the, I'm not perfect, stop it. The only reason you say that is you could mess up. Keep saying, I'm not perfect, I'm not perfect. You're just giving yourself the door to keep messing up. But if you go to the Word and you want to look at context in the book of James, it talks about being complete. In other words, a form of perfection. It's when you begin to live a life consistently. Follow me. Does it mean that you, you're just like, oh, you don't ever stumble or mess up, you know? But it does mean that you're complete in the sense of whole, nothing missing, nothing broken. You have stepped up in, stepped into the Jesus realm, and you now start walking out consistently what Jesus does. You are whole now because you start healing. Stuff starts happening in the inside of you. You, you following me? That's what it means by complete. So basically when Abraham took his child, it completed, it was perfect because he applied what God had said to them, basically making him whole. A man who believed righteous because he did what God said to do. Oh. So how do you ask? And, you know, Pastor, how do I know if I'm asking with the right motive? No problem. I got the answer for you. The way you know is, according to what you ask, is it giving God glory? What you ask God, is it giving him glory? I know, I know we walk around a lot like, to God be the glory, to God with the glory. Okay, have you ever searched your heart and really checked if that argument you had that now you're like, God, would you tell them, da da da, da was really about you and you said it was for God's glory and you said all this stuff and realistically it was your own flesh fighting on the inside. That ain't for God's glory. God's glory meant that you would go be able to speak to somebody, bring healing to the situation. It doesn't matter. We're all going to mess up. We might get upset. Me and Henry one day, my bum head. What makes us Christians is if we could sit down and talk about it, hug it out, I love you, man, and then keep walking as brothers. That's what makes you a believer. It's not the fact that you're not ever going to, like, get angry or maybe you're outside and it's hot. And the brother's like, hey, brother. He came from the inside. He's like, and you're like, what? And then you catch yourself like, ugh. You were tired. Your kids had you. Are y'all with me? The question is, are you sleeping with the enemy? Are you sleeping with the enemy? Do you have a side chick or a side man? See, how do you expect God to be intimate with you when you're intimate with someone else? God wants to be a friend. I'm going to read John 15, 1 through 17, and I'll wrap this up. 15, 1 through 17. I am the true vine. My father is the gardener. Every branch in me does not produce fruit. He removes. He prunes every branch that produces fruit so that it will produce more fruit. 
You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I in you, just as a branch is unable to produce fruit by itself unless it remains on the vine. Neither can you, uh, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. It keeps going. I'm going to skip all the way. Y'all finished reading that, but I'm going to go all the way to 9. As the Father has loved me, I have also I have also loved you. Remain in my love, and you will keep my command. So remain in my love. So if you're in his love, the way you show that you love God is by listening and doing what he tells you to do, by following his word. Not because, because you respect and you take his word serious. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's command and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that my, my joy... Everybody want joy? Okay, so I tell you these things so that my joy may be in you, and your joy may be complete. This is my command, love one another as I have loved you. No one, great, no love greater, than, greater love than this, to lay down his life for his friends. Ooh, this is good. You are my friends if you do what I command you. So you are his friends if you do what I command you. You are his friends if you do what I So you're only a friend if you do what he commands you. You're only his friend if you do what he commands you. You're only his friend. Now, of course, it keeps going. It talks about the proud and the humble because the only way you could truly obtain these things is through hum humility. He says he resists the proud and he talks about drawing near to God. <clears throat> Amen? Now let me tell you the context behind this because I think it's really important. Because we say, oh, draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. No, the people that he was speaking to understood that there was a process, right? They understood that the outer courts were for the Gentiles, that the Jews were in the holy place and that the holy of holies was for the priests. Last time I checked, we're a chosen priesthood. So we are now have the ability to enter into that place. But now the way you do it, see, when you, before you had to be, do all these things to enter there. And if you were a priest and you didn't do those things, you plop over, you hear the bells ring. They're like, another one's dead. They pull him out, right? Because he had to be this certain thing. Now Jesus died for you. Therefore, you are holy because he's holy. Yet you obey his command and you're walking in his presence and you're walking in the things of the spirit. Now what happens is that the more you start drawing near to him, the further away you you leave from the thoughts and patterns of the world. Y'all with me? And the more you do that, you wind up, hey, in the Holy of Holies, walking it out all the time. Because the veil is torn and now you have the ability to get there. So who he was talking to when he was telling them, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you, were people who understood what it took to get into the Holy of Holies. So he's trying to get y'all to understand the same thing. He's like, look, as long as we follow, follow the thought patterns of God and you continue to walk in his presence and walk in the spirit and, you know, you mess up over here and you, get, and you keep, you know, this is not like this thing where we start judging everybody out of, we can't do that because you'd have to talk to them and maybe you're supposed to be in their life because you're supposed, you got upset, but really you're supposed to help them. <laughs> Discipleship. We don't want to do that because sometimes it's, Right? It's like being 35 and talking to a 15-year-old all over again. It's like, ah, how are we going to grow up? But it's what we're called to do. But a teacher is only as good as a student. Right? So Jesus was a great teacher, but he needed some people to follow. He's asking the same of us today. And we're closing. He wants to know if he's included in everything you do. Well, how do I know if, if I... If, this is the part that sometimes I think we mess up because we think friend, like, oh, friend. No, a friend is one who will lay his life down for you. It says no greater love than this than one who will lay down his life. So when he calls you a friend, it's because he gave his life for you. The question is, are you giving it for him? So then I call you friend. And how do you know you're giving it to him? Because every time you apply the word, you have to die at the cross. You can't apply the word out of a natural. No, it's hard sometimes. But possible. I'm not selling drugs no more. I'm not in prison. I'm not hitting nobody in the head. I like this sometimes. Praise God for the cross. I could die and allow the spiritual to take place. And the more I do it, the more I become. So therefore, I don't have to try and go into rowing the boat. Right? Oh, this is so hard. This is so hard. Because you never spend time with him and you don't understand his ways. And you don't like to die. So you're in this rowboat. 
It's so hard. And some people are in a rowboat with the Holy Spirit like this. I mean, in a motorboat. Sometimes, sometimes a little slower. Because we allow the Spirit to take us. We allow Him to make the decisions for us. Is it hard? Yeah. Well, so worth it. So worth it. So worth it. Man, is it okay to cry? Yeah. So worth it. It's the gym of life. So worth it. But God, what's this on the other side? What's on the other? You trust me? You who give good gifts and are evil. <laughs> it's pretty in your face. Imagine what He wants to do for you. If we could all stand to our feet. If you're watching at home, I want you to take this moment, put your coffee down, do whatever it is you need to do to really think out what it is that is being said here today. And God is so good. And the good news is that no matter what kind of life you have or what kind of life you're living, you could die at the cross. And you can live again. You get another opportunity. Come on, you get another chance to do life with people. I know we've been taught many things, but when you're in this word, man, and you start to see, you start to learn to forgive because you need forgiveness. And you start to, man, at the standard that I use, that's the standard that's going to be used against me. And at the form that I judge, it's going to be given back to me, pressed down, shaken together. I know we use that for money, but that's totally talking about judging. Even though you could still probably pull, but if we're going to use it in context, it's about how you judge people. How you forgive. The way you forgive is going to give it back to you, pressed down, shaking together and running over. That's, that's, that's some good stuff because you're like, man, then that puts the responsibility in you. Not on the other person. You're like, yo, I'm just going to do this because it's telling me that how I do it. I'm going to get that back, pressed down, shaking together and running over. Are you quick to listen to what God is telling you today? slow to say something back because we always want to say something back to a perfect father who knows everything that's crazy right but dad he's like no no just listen we're coming into a times where all those things are read and the people who you know what's going to be the hardest part is knowing well it's going to be easy if you're doing it but it's going to be the hardest when the whole planet's telling you you're wrong think about it I know you're like, oh, that's never going to happen. Yeah, neither was us sitting in our homes with coronavirus, right? Looks like kind of happening a little bit to me. I don't know about you. I don't want to take that gamble. And if you're in this room or you're at home and you're like, man, Pastor Juan, you know what? This message has impacted me today. I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I want you to raise your hand high in the sky. I'm not going to make you come up to the front. I just want you to raise your hand. Thank you so much. 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 I really appreciate your honesty. That's all it is. It's like, yo, I have a flat. <laughs> Nobody's going to look at you different. You know why? Because everybody here has changed the flat before. And some of us are still changing flats. <laughs> so it's so good to be in a place where it's safe that you go by and, ah, I got a big flat. And that's cool. Nobody here is going to look at you crazy. And if they do, let me know. I'll check them so the second question is man you know what I know Jesus but I've been that person that really hasn't taken the time to really hear somebody out and I just judge them and I do all that if that's you I want you to be honest today I want you to raise your hand high in the sky I think we've all done it I've done it I'll be the first one to raise my hand I know some of y'all like never whatever you just, you're not just bold enough to be like, yo, I, I, I've done that. I've thought like, man, I can't believe, da, 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 and you do this whole story in your head, right? And it's not real. <laughs> when you get to the person, they're like, uh, no. I want you to raise your hand high in the sky. Come on. Today, we, we're repenting of it. That's what we're doing, man. We're just like, man, God, forgive me. I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. Amen? And so I'm going to say something. I want you to see that guy in the back. See the guy in the back, Jason? He's raising his hands. Since in the month of June, we're not really doing the altar here, but we're still creating an altar. And what I mean is we want people to be safe. So we're not going to have a bunch of people up here, just, you know, all over the place. We're trying to keep as much control as we can, right? We're like not just chaotic. So 
there's another room over there. There's going to be some ministers over there. And you're like, Pastor Juan, you know what? Today I came here and I am uh, hurting and I need help. I need some, I need, you, you spoke to me and I, I really need to just talk to somebody. They're going to be in that room. You can go, you can go immediately to that room right now if you want. If you guys, if you raise your hand for the first question today, you can go in that room too. Let somebody talk to you. Let them tell you your next steps. Amen. And so I'm going to pray for those at home. There should be somebody answering your questions, right? There's going to be people in that room. If, if, this is, if you're like, man, I, I, I need that. Well, I got saved today. Let them give you the next steps. Don't, don't, don't just let it be about a moment. Let, just step that thing out, man. Let's walk this thing out together. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much. I love you. I love you, God. I'm honored, God, that you would say, Juan, would you, would you speak to, your, to my people? And Father, I pray that you will always guide me and direct me. So that I can always speak the truth. And that the people that come in this room and the people that are watching at home would receive it as the implanted word, which is able to save how they think, how they feel, and their emotions. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.